You're good. Okay, so welcome everybody to um, the workshop called Through the Portal of Experiential Learning. Um, this is a workshop that's going to be presented um, as part of the Co-Learning Winter Festival. Um, so yeah, really excited to be here with you all today. So I'm wondering if I can have Scott, Michaela, and Austin um, introduce themselves um, as the co-presenters on the workshop. You want to start, Scott? Sure. So I'm Scott. I'm not sure. You can hear me OK? Um, yeah. So I'm a person who does a lot of geospatial stuff and a lot of sort of working with different uh, software developments and a few other things with different communities. And so today I'm going to be sampling some of the software we can use on tablets or uh, cell phones to be able to collect stuff from the field and then how we can load those data into the portal that we use with different groups around BC. Thanks. Awesome, Michaela, do you wanna go introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name's Michaela. I'm an, uh, an, a research assistant with the ECHO Network and I have been working with uh, Scott, Ella, and Austin over the past couple of weeks to try to integrate some different tools and processes that we have all together. Thank you. Awesome. And Austin? Hi, um, I'm Austin. I'm a recent, uh, recently graduated with computer science major, um, GIS minor. I've been doing portal development work for almost two years now, and I've been doing that with TACLA, First Nations, and UNBC, and yeah. Awesome. Um, thanks, everybody. And so my name is Ella, and I have been um, a research assistant um, with UNBC and helping to try to get more people using the portal for a couple of years now. Um, so yeah, um, in this workshop, uh, we're gonna go over a couple of things. Um, so the outline is we're gonna start off with um, myself giving a little bit of an overview of why we might want to use um, you know, digital mapping apps for experiential learning and with the co-learning project. Um, and then Scott is gonna give a little demo of how to use GeoPaparazzi and Smash. So GeoPaparazzi is that for Android and Smash for Apple. Um, and then we wanna give a chance for anybody who has the apps going on their phones to go outside um, and try using it. And then we'll come back in and we will demo how to upload you know, the information that you, you know, collected using the app into um, the portal uh, web tool. So yeah, and then at the end, we'll have time for questions and talk about next steps. So first I wanted to just talk about a little bit about what is GeoPaparazzi. So it is a, an app that you can have on your um, you know, handheld devices. Um, GeoPaparazzi is a tool developed to do very fast qualitative engineering and geologic surveys and GIS data collection. But don't let, let that scare you. Basically, um, it can allow you to go outside and be um, you know, having a GPS track. Um, of where you are, you can you know drop points, and you can also um, take geo-referenced um, you know notes and information. You can take pictures, you can do sketches, and have that all logged in your phone um, to be able to look at later and understand um, what you were doing later. Um, so why geo paparazzi um, with you know uh, School District ninety one and the co learning project? So. Um, you know, one piece of what co-learning is, is about um, school-based monitoring. And so most um, school-based monitoring or citizen science projects do use some kind of technology for data collection. Um, and, you know, immediately in the field, you're collecting onto um, a tablet, so that's easier to upload <laughs> into a database after. Um, and it can, you know, GeoPaparazzi and Smash are really great because they allow you to take photos, do sketches, and record different kinds of information that we can then upload to the portal tool that we that we have um, that the school district can use. Um, so I <laughs> made this diagram. It's a little bit con confusing, but basically, you can see that you know the goal of co-learning is to connect students, communities, and waterways. And so I think the geo paparazzi and smash tools are really cool because they allow 
you know, students to connect to their waterways by doing outdoor field learning, and that that then um, becomes an artifact that, you know, community members can um, connect to. And so it just, it, it really provides another mode of um, doing that connection that we're really trying to, you know, foster with co-learning. Um, yeah, so that's um, that for now. We'll move on now to Scott. Um, giving a little bit of an overview um, with his tablet shared um, so that you can see how to use the, these apps for yourself. Over to you, Scott. Okay, thanks. Just going to share my screen here. So this is my Android tablet. It uh, should work very similar to if you're using an iPhone and those types of things. I'm just gonna turn my volume down on my, uh, on my tablet right now, if I can. Uh, just so I don't get a bunch of feedback from other people and stuff like that. Anyway, Ella was describing GeoPaparazzi uh, as one way of collecting field data. There's um, tons of apps out there, of course. This one is one of many. It's one of the apps that I prefer to use because it's open source. Uh, so that means it's free to use. We don't have any licensing restrictions with it. So I'm going to open up GeoPaparazzi on my on the tablet and this is where it stops and this is where you get in and can work with it we should make a point to mention though geo paparazzi is the original um piece of software that was designed designed you know as a joint venture by a number of groups and from uh, south america so from brazil and from actually spain so in europe as well and then they have a you know a couple of key developers that are working on it over the years and what's happened is all the geo paparazzi because it's easier and there's licensing issues around it, it was easier to develop for android and that's why it's only a free for android but they've made a subsequent product called smash and that's what ella's been talking about is the both of them so i'm just going to quickly show geo paparazzi and then we'll quickly go into smash and i can show that they do basically the similar same types of things we're not going to go too deep into projects and all those things we're just going to go into the mapping interface and then uh, go and you know collect some data and have the ability to use these things and then show how the data comes back out of it. So on this particular instance, I've got Geo Paparazzi Yoda with a project that I've already started a long time ago. It's actually a co-project that I started back in February. So it has a bunch of layers that are like spatial GIS layers that are relative to this project. So there's a number of buttons that are on the front screen that you're looking at right now. Some are for collecting GPS, some are for importing, exporting, setting up projects. Those other things you can explore, explore at another time, and they're very powerful. You can, what's nice is that you can set up multiple projects for multiple users and do all sorts of things. But it all comes down to firing up the mapping interface to do this. And so the mapping interface is is uh, the top right hand corner, one of those six different ones. And you can see that I've loaded in there. I have just put all sorts of different types of maps into it. What I have right now is a nice topographic map in the background that comes uh, from a web mapping service. And so you can have several different ones if you want to. And if you want, you can go in and change all those different maps that are there. So I just clicked the mapping button and the, the map shows all the different layers that are on side of that. So this National Geographic map is the one that's in the back from Esri. And then I have a watershed on there, some watersheds, a couple other pieces of information that are put into it. And, and so then when we go and zoom into that, you can see those different map layers that are in there. And you can customize map layers and take map layers out of a GIS, for instance, and bring them in. And so then each of these things have different values that are inside of it. So we use this when we work with First Nations, for instance, when they're going out and collecting stuff onto the landscape. We can have a whole bunch of data that's associated with these places when you go. So they're basically a series of transparent layers that show up. And then you can turn them on and off and you can zoom in and zoom out just like what I was doing there. And there's a number of little things you can do in GeoParaparazzi. You can create some layers from scratch and then start drawing on the map if you want to. And so you can use it as a sort of a quasi GIS. But the part that we talk about most of all is this idea of field collection. So when you get out into the field, so if you're you know, looking around in certain areas, then you can zoom in and start collecting information that might be pertinent to where you're working on. So here we're gonna go into Vanderhoof, for instance. I'll just straighten that out, sorry. And when we get down in there, you can see that's already some sample points from different layers that are put in there. But let's say I want to collect something right along the edge of the river. 
inside of these watersheds in there. So I'm just, there's Murray Creek right there as it comes down into the main stem for the Chaco River. Maybe I'm making some comments on a culvert. Then I can click my notes button and then you would go and fill in the notes. So with this one, we're just using this example note. And this is a note that Austin has filled in that Austin's created for us to play around with. So I can go in and put in what I, whatever I want. And I can fill in the two parts to the form if I want to. Uh, I can take a picture. So I take a picture of the GIS lab. So here's our, our uh, you know, nice little picture of the camera that we're working on. And I can save that. And there's the example note that shows up on the screen. Now you can customize the forms to be whatever you want. So it doesn't have to say example note. It can say whatever you want in there. Uh, so this is just something that Austin looked up quickly that we can use for both geopaparazzi and for smash. So now that I have that note inside of there, then I can carry on and click and look at any other notes that I want to. And I can actually go back into the note and make changes as, as you know, of whatever I want to do over time. So I save the note again so I can change, blah, 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 carry on. So that's basically the long and short of quickly collecting data out in the field using geopaparazzi. I'm just going to quickly go to Smash. So Smash is the same type of deal. Uh, so I'll pull out of this map a bit because what I what's happened in Smash here, actually maybe I'll just turn off some layers while we're doing this while we're playing around. But you can see the Smash interface is similar uh, when you get into it. Um, maybe what I will do actually is I will kill Smash and I will start from scratch on it so you can see the starting screen from smash where we go so this is where you so that's similar this is a little bit different than the six panels we saw in, in uh, geo paparazzi we can open up an existing project we can create a new project so it has that sort of same project idea we've got this smash demo for code 2021 for today's date and that's the one that we're just going to go play around with and so there we go that's where you see, I've already taken one note in this area, but again, you can see it's map centric. It, but because I'm inside the lab, I don't actually have G GPS locations. So I have to kind of zoom out a bit. And if we really wanted to collect something in and around our area, let's see how, I, how well I do at zooming into Vanderhoof from way out in the, ah, I didn't, made it to Alberta instead. So when I go into looking at these areas, the same type of deal. We still have the same um, map. We have the same layers that we can work with. Uh, and you can turn layers on and off. We even have the same symbol for that. So I've got the Wikipedia map on, but I can turn on OpenStreetMap instead. The different layers. I can also turn on the satellite imagery layer if we want to. And same kind of thing. You can zoom right in there. So GeoPaparazzi has the same ability to have those those layers, the, the same satellite layers and all those. So we can go back into the river again, along the river, uh, where the Chaco meets um, Murray Creek, for instance. And we can change our uh, map again if we want to go back in to sort of get a better idea where that's happening. So there's the river. There's Murray Creek coming into it. And so you can see the functionality is very much the same. And if I want to grab a note, I have two ways of grabbing notes in this particular instance, but we like to use the one where you see the little red one above the little plus there. The first one on the left is, uh, let's just get out of that. The first one on the left is a map type, is a note type that we're really not that interested in. We like this little, this, they're sort of standard notes. We like the second one, if I can get my finger to click the actual tab of it. Hmm. This is really sucking. And I'm not sure why that's the case. Let's just go turn off some layers. See if that helps. Stop. Oh, I see what's happening. Sorry. It's, it's Zoom that's screwing me up in that, uh, that particular place. I'll try it again. I see what's happening. Can't quite get in there to get that place. Give me one more second, see if there's a way around this. I'll plug my mouse into the into my tablet, 
Let's see if that will help. Ah, uh, no, sorry. Sorry, folks, with this screen sharing, it does not seem to be able to allow me to get into using Zoom or using, let's just try one more way of doing this. Share document. Nope. Scott, can you open it? before you screen share and then go back to screen sharing, would that help? Will that work? That's a good idea. Okay, let's try that. So I'm just gonna, so nothing is on the screen right now. I click on the, on the form. Okay, so then hopefully I can go back and turn the screen share on and it'll be in the same spot. So I click that little button. That was a good idea, Michaela. I did the trick. If I uh, clicked on that little button that I was hoping to down there in the bottom corner, um, you know, way down here, we can use that same custom example note that Austin built. And you'll see it looks exactly the same as it did in Geo Paparazzi. So I know Austin note again, that type of stuff. Take a picture, same kind of deal. Uh, or lab equipment, you can see where I was trying to capture a different way of doing it today using uh, my camera and stuff. And so now I have another note inside that. The same kind of deal, I can click on that note and it gives me information. I can edit that note if I want to. Um, I can share it, I can trash it, I can do all those types of things, whatever I want to do with that. So that is the essentials about how you can go and collect information. So basically you would launch Smash, you would, you would create a project, and then when you create the project, the map comes up and you hit that little button down in the bottom corner there. And when you click that button, up is gonna come a, a note and you fill that note in and then take a picture and away you go. And then once that's done, so then we have both Smash and uh, Geo Paparazzi, and we have buttons to export or bring in data and those types of things. The exports are kind of limited, so we tend not to use them necessarily. But if you're a GIS person, you got geo packages, KMLs, the GPX that you recorded when you're done. You can also get a report out of it. Those same things are available in the Geo Paparazzi. Uh, so you, you can do that if you want in Geo Paparazzi. You can hit the, those buttons and export these things out. You can tell it's an older app, so it doesn't look as fancy, but you can go and do those things. But what we're really looking at, maybe I'll just zoom in and show you. I just happen to have a file browser on my, on my, on my uh, tablet here. Inside of there, if we go and we look around, so on, it's just like a computer. Uh, so even if you're using an Apple, phone or an Apple tablet, like an iPad, you can go in and use AirDrop, browse through these folders, get down into the projects folder, and you can see there's that smash them co 2021, the, the project that I created. That GPAP file is what we want to use to bring it into the portal. And so, uh, on, and so the same thing, I'm just on the other side, I'm in Geo Paparazzi. When I get to Geo Paparazzi, the project that I'm working on right now um, is it's up one folder. There's that co Feb 2020 GPAP file there. So that's the same one that I want to use. So if I was actually using, uh, and I'll leave this part to Austin, but for instance, when I go to the portal, uh, so I'll just bring that up sort of quick, like, When we go into our portal then, then if you're on a tablet because the screen is quite large and easy to work with, we can actually go in right when you're on the tablet and go in here to 
fill in our form and use the geopaparazzi voter to do that. And you would grab that GPAP file while you're doing it. So I hope that met what we were hoping to achieve here today for looking and exampling these things. I hope that made sense. And I'll stop sharing now and carry on to the next part. I think it's helpful to let folks know now too that it seems a little bit overwhelming and Scott's definitely an expert in this, but I'm not a techie person, not a tech expert at all by any means. And I have like begun to get way more comfortable with both of these apps and uploading into the portal and everything like that. So believe in yourself and, and don't be overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So now that Scott's given you a great demo, um, I think it'd be great to take, you know, 10 minutes or so um, to, for any, anyone who wants to, who has the app downloaded, to just go out and trial taking an image note. Um, or if you have any questions at this point, we can also do that before you go out. Um, so, yeah. Do you have to start a new project or can, can, can you just go and start an image note? When you in the you're smash using Smashberry, no, Joe Scott, you you're the one that made me buy a, a damn Android phone. I've been cursing you ever since. Oh, but that's geez. okay. No, if you're using Geo Paparazzi, you do not have to create a new one. There's a standard one that's there, and you can just go out and collect an image note. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But the same is not true for Smash. You do need to open up a project before you can access those nodes. Yeah. Great. I will pause the recording then for taking the break. If I might be helpful to do your uh, little demo first, Michaela, um, and then transition into that, and then we have it all recorded as one. Yeah, sure. Okay, so like Scott mentioned, after we've gone outside and we have uh, a GPAP file, which is what we download from either Smash or Geo Paparazzi, we actually get, uh, well, we have the opportunity to upload this to the portal. So I'm just gonna screen share. And I hope that everyone can see that. So what's really neat about the portal, and we, we have a YouTube account which explains this, uh, this little mini demo I'm about to condense. Um, but we also have, so our YouTube account has a couple of different videos on it. And we'll show you how to find that YouTube account in this demo. Um, but basically we have the outline of the Nechesco Reservoir here. We can zoom in. Um, and at different uh, zoom in layers, we start to see different um, bodies of water pop up and that kind of thing. I'm gonna log in. And I'm gonna show off some of our maps that we have already uploaded. So these are what we call base layers. These base layers we can click on and off. So I just click communities. Now a whole bunch of communities have popped up. Um, I can click that one off. Natural resource regions. School districts. So what's really neat about these is that we can actually overlay them. So we can have multiple maps on at the same time. It's tough to see those two, but for, this is another example of overlaying layers. So right now we actually have, well, we have one map open, an open street map, and then we have three different base layers overlaid on each other. It's kind of a neat way to uh, take a look at how they interact. Okay, up here in the top, um, Search, uh, search bar, we can use the search function and actually enter in a term. And we, we're looking to see if this term will yield anything in the portal. So I'm going to search wildfire and give it a minute to think. And then we can see that there's been two submissions uh, that use the keyword wildfire. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one. I'm going to click on preview. And this is a preview of the form. A form, you, if you notice beside the search where I clicked search to enter in this wildfire, there was a fill a form button. 
So if you clicked on that, it would have prompted you to fill out a form that looks very similar to, the, to this form here that we're previewing. So this is just a whole bunch of information here. We also have an allowed users tab. So this allows us to set permissions on each account as to who can see what that's in the portal. Uh, we have spatial data. These spatial data could be downloaded. I'm not sure if you can see on my screen right now, but if I move this over, there is a download button over here. You just might not be able to see it. Um, and then we have child submissions. So we've linked to submissions. I'm gonna go back and show off this child submission because it's pretty neat. So here it is. If I click on this, one of the reasons I wanna show you this is because we have a really neat GIF in here. So I can click on this hyperlink and it's gonna take me out to watch this GIF in a, GIF in a bigger uh, screen. But this is an up-to-date in the last 100 years, uh, the wildfire burned areas. And so a, a colleague of ours at the Echo Network, Aita, has actually created this GIF for us. And it, it's really interesting. Um, and this is just an example of one of the many kinds of file types we can upload to the portal. So this is a GIF. We can also upload videos, pictures, obviously text files. Um, and another, we can, of course, upload literature. So if I search water samples, then it's gonna yield quite a few responses. Oh, sorry. Let me do this. Uh, so here we conducted a literature review, which is what the submission name NLR stands for, Necheco Literature Review. And we have quite a few academic articles. We are currently and will continue to upload other forms of literature as well, as well as like reports and other websites that are relevant to the Necheco um, watershed. But this is a huge review. At the bottom here, I can show you something pretty neat. So we have a report. And again, this is previewing the form. But what I really wanted to show off is that there is Sorry, I think it's my computer acting slow. Let's give it a minute. Perfect. There are spatial uh, data. So there's a, there's a layer here that we could actually add to our map. We can download this to our own computer as well. This is where the download button is. But for right now, I know that this layer is called projects. So I'm gonna exit out of here and I'm gonna to go to another um, option up on the top menu bar, map tools, add a layer. I'm gonna to go to portal submission because we know we were searching in the submissions. And then it's a layer name. And we just saw that the layer name was projects. So here it is. I'm gonna to click to highlight this project. I'm gonna go add to map. So now similar to these base layers that I was showing you, we've just added the project as basically a layer. So we've added a layer to our map. And this is just showing you where act, all the activity has occurred. And we dropped these points here. So we can create those kinds of maps within the portal. Pretty neat. Um, and then if we go to fill a form, which is where Austin's gonna take us away here, then we can see how we upload our geo paparazzi loader. If you want more information or anything that I just showed you and, or you're thinking, hey, you mentioned the YouTube account, um, how do I get to it? So I'm gonna type in training and the portal's gonna yield a search called YouTube portal training videos. So if you were able to log in either with your own account or a general account into the IWRG portal, you'll be able to uh, view this form that I've submitted. And if you click on this hyperlink here, it'll take you right to our YouTube channel and then you can have access to all the videos we've recorded. And I'll pass this off to Austin now. Thank you. Hi, um, so I'm just gonna start screen sharing now. There we go. And I'll refresh my portal here. And log in. Okay, so I'm in the portal now. I 
let's say I've just gotten my GPAT file, I copied it over onto my computer, I go fill a form, open GeoPaparazzi loader, browse, then I'll just find my file over here. There we go. Hit next and it'll upload the GPAP file. And then you'll come on this screen here. Um, basically in my GPAP file, I have two notes taken. So each note can be uploaded as its own drafts mission. I will select both of these notes to be uploaded into new drafts missions. Create drafts missions from selection, submit two records, yes. And then it will return saying that these two drafts missions were successfully created and it will give me the IDs of 387, 388. So, those drafts missions have been created. So I can go resume a drafts mission and then 387388, open this up and this will give me all of the information that was inside my note. So this note in particular was just a point of one of the local game stores downtown. Um, has testing for each of the text fields, uh, has a photo, and it has a spatial layer. So if I go submit, sends out an email, and I'll do the same for the other one. Submit, there we go. Now, those two drafts have been submitted. I can go add layer, portal submission. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom here, there's 387, 388. I can add both of them to the map. Now those points are on the map. I'll just move, zoom over to the side there so I can open up table of contents. Go zoom to extent. And then if I just zoom out just a, oh, zoom out just a little bit there, I can get both points onto the screen. Okay, there we go. So got one point here, one point here. So both are loaded into the map. And of course you can still search for these submissions afterwards. So 387, there you go. You can preview it. And yeah, that's about all I can show here if there aren't any questions about that. <laughs> Are you able to identify the this as well? Um, Austin, by hovering over it or is clicking on it on the map? Uh, well, I can go and go into the attribute table of the particular layer that I've added, and it'll give me information as to what submission it came from and all that. But uh, clicking on the points themselves doesn't do anything. There is an identify feature, but that might be a little difficult with points. Oh, it managed to get it. Yeah. So, yeah, I can identify a point, click on the submission ID here, and it will open up the submission too. Look at that. Austin's learning as he goes as well. <laughs> Any other questions for Austin? 
Well, I have a question. So to use that identify tool, then do you think it's necessary to have added those points to the map? Well, obviously we need them on the map. So yes, right? Yeah, yeah, you need them on the map so that you can click identify, then click your point. Uh. Right. But even if you hadn't added them to the map, Michaela, you can search in the portal by a geographic extent, tell you all of the things you've collected out in the field through GeoPaparazzi or Smash in that area. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I have a question. Um, like, let's say, um, you know, a, a high school class went out and, you know, collected information with uh, GeoPaparazzi and then loaded into the portal. Um, how could they share that to, um, you know, maybe their local mayor or something like that? Yeah, so the local mayor would have to have an account <laughs> <in the> portal. <laughs> uh, but you can, of course, what we've done in the portal now is we've created these public users. So when you put it into the portal, you can go in and grant permission to that public user. And then they can just go to the portal and load that layer and look at it. Or they can do a search for that particular thing and find it. Oh, cool. Yeah. In the future, we're hoping to develop, you know, a, just you can make whatever web page you want that will talk to the portal and bring stuff out as a public user, for instance. So that's the, the next phase of development is this template development. Does that answer your question, Ella? Yeah, that's great. And so if they were a portal user, you could um, alert them whenever you are submitting information? When you submit it to the portal and you grant them permission, they get an email. So when you put it in as a draft submission, you can add a notification there. So as soon as it goes into the portal, it sends an email to the person. That's great. So a mayor would be very thrilled to get tons of emails from the portal. 